Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Valentine's Week. I came up with this concept a while ago. Obviously, you'll know that in October we do Hello Clean Week. And if you're a member of the Rock the Housework Patreon vault, we had an amazing, amazing time over the Halloween, Hello Clean Week, because we had like we spun the wicked wheel of fortune and you didn't know whether you were going to get a cleaning trick or a cleaning treat. So I thought, you know, let's shake. By the way, that noise is my neighbours cutting a hedge. My neighbour's gardener's cutting hedges. I do not have a giant mosquito in my study. However, I'm just going to crack on. I wanted to make sure that we had some content around about this time of year when maybe things are just a little bit dreary, everything's a little bit boring, summer seems like a long time away, you know, the fun of the festive season has long since passed us by. So I thought, you know, it's the season of love. Why don't we just try and get some content out there to help you fall back in love with your home again? And also over on the Rock the House with Patreon Vault, we're going to have some um, Valentine sessions going to drop on Wednesday as well. So if you're not a member of the Vault, then make sure you go and check those out. And I want to have you finishing this week feeling a lot calmer about where you live, feeling less critical potentially about your home, feeling less critical of yourself and about how you run your home. And I want to talk to you today, I wanted to kick it all off, right, with what happens if your home or the housework or whatever has been put on the back burner, if it's not received as much love as you necessarily would give it for whatever reason. Now, I... Um, speak about this regularly. This is not a um, surprise revelation, but if this is the first time you've heard it, please know this is not a surprise revelation. But I suffer and have suffered with anxiety since I was about 16. Um, and I am 42 um, this month. And I have peaks and troughs all the time. It's like in a cycle. And um, obviously, when I was a new mom, that anxiety manifested itself through overcleaning. And like, um, if you suffer with anxiety, you might be able to resonate with this. It kind of like, I think about my anxiety as like this little, little creature that I take around with me. And sometimes the creature is teeny, teeny, tiny, and I'm able to pack him away and he doesn't really affect my life. But sometimes he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the moment, he's quite large. And uh, as a result of that, I have not felt like myself. And today, um, yesterday, I did absolutely no cleaning whatsoever. And I actually texted Mike and I was like, I did no cleaning today. He's like, how are you feeling today? And I was like, well, we'll just put it this way. I didn't know. He was like, oh, you well, you must be, you must be feeling, <laughs> you must be bad. Um, and I wanted to share with you my strategy that I use and that I share with other people who might be, for whatever reason, like not feeling it at the moment, but know that they need to try and get back into the groove because otherwise they're potentially creating a, a bigger problem down the line, potentially, right? So when I'm feeling anxious, I can, um, it kind of engulfs my whole being my whole like day it can um sort of the little creature is big enough that it's always always there right it's always just ever present and over the so I'm 42 this month and I've got diag like, I diagnosed when I was 16 so 16 to 32 so it's 20 26 years is that math right so over these 26 years I have just learned to live with it when it sort of flares up and when it subsides then great so this is what I do I know for me personally, I feel better when the house is straight, like looks straightened up, right? Everything's been straightened up and tidy. It's going to make me feel worse and more anxious and more likely to talk negatively to myself if I haven't managed to do the thing. But sometimes getting the impetus to do the thing, make yourself feel better, is the hardest thing isn't it? And everyone's mental health challenges are just completely different, right? So I am just coming at this from my own personal point of view. I'm not professional. This is not a diagnosis. All the disclaimers here. So I will focus on teeny, tiny little chunks. 
the smallest of chunks of tasks, which could be as small as, I need to do a load of laundry today. Okay, well, I tell you what, let's just choose what we're gonna wash. Okay, we're just gonna choose what we're gonna wash. We're gonna pick out a load, right? And then I'll go off and I might sit down, have a cup of tea. And then I'll come back and I'll be like, I'm gonna put that in the washing machine. So it's breaking down a small task, which is putting the washing on to even smaller micro tasks within that one task. Does that make sense? And why this works for me is because I can see throughout the day or the week or however long um, this will last, I will see these slow increments of progressive steps that are taking me towards that goal that I wanted to achieve because I know that it's going to make me feel better. But those steps are so small that like, they seem much less overwhelming and much man more manageable. It's much more manageable to, I'm just going to go to the laundry basket and I'm going to choose what I'm going to wash today. It's much less overwhelming to, to think of it like that than to think of it like, oh God, I've got to do a whole load. I've got to wash it. I've got to dry it. I've got to put it away. You know, it's it's just taking it really small. The other thing that I do is I concentrate on the priority jobs. Now, obviously, I will follow the organizer method. And one of the reasons why the organizer method has followed me throughout my adult, like my, my parenthood life, because that's when I created it, is because it has those small incremental steps. So when my anxiety is not bothering me at all and I'm skipping through life and, you know, everyone is like, oh, my, you know, Gem must have it together all the time. No. And with another, this is one of the reasons why I'm telling you this on today's episode is because, you know, it's not perfect. Well, I'm never, nothing's ever perfect, but you know, it's not necessarily how it always appears on social media. And we're going to get to that in, in other episodes. Um, but the organizer method is broken down into those little steps. So when I created it, when I was feeling like really overwhelmed and over cleaning, over cleaning, I was breaking the cleaning as in the macro task. I've got to clean the house. And I was basically cleaning the whole house almost every single day I broke that down into smaller tasks which were day days and the rooms for that day and then I broke it down even more for the small tasks within that day and it still works for me when my um anxiety is bad because I can just look down that list like blah 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 blah, blah and or instinctively say that's not urgent that's not urgent that's not urgent you know cleaning out the cutlery door kitchen day not urgent right but maybe cleaning the countertops. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so pick what you what you think are the urgent ones. Completely sweep aside the ones that aren't in your you know in your life in your kitchen or wherever you're doing whatever you're doing aren't urgent. And this can apply to anything. It can apply to life admin. Anything. Anything at all. Get those non-urgent things out of the way. And then for me, just tackling those urgent things, it, it just helps just to stop that feeling of, and things are getting worse and things are getting worse because you're just slowly, almost like wading through that treacle, if that makes sense. And someone asked me a question over on my Instagram. Um, um, I did like a, a question and answer session. Um, like, where do, where do I start if I am just completely overwhelmed with anxiety? Like, where do I start? So that is what I personally would do. Break it down into the smallest of chunks. The smallest, like how small can you make these chunks within this job? And like do that small chunk, go and have a cup of tea or go and sit and stare out the window. You've done something, great. Go and reward yourself for that. And then when you're looking at what it is you want to achieve, what jobs do you want to do? What jobs do you want to break into those little micro, micro, micro chunks? Absolutely only ever pick the really, really important things. And also the things that are going to make a difference. The things that are going to give you that feeling of, you know what? I'm so proud of myself because I, I'm, you know, I'm going through a rough patch, my anxiety or whatever. And I still managed to do that. Yeah, it was 
a lot less than I might normally do when I'm having a good day, but I still managed to do that. And I'm really proud of myself. And look, you know what, if you're listening to this thinking, I actually don't think I can do anything at all, then don't do anything at all and allow yourself just that space to be and feel like you are nurturing yourself and you're not beating yourself up about it. It doesn't matter. It is only the cleaning. And this whole week is about falling in love with your home again and not feeling like your home and the cleaning and the housework is just yet another thing that is stressing you out or it's just yet another thing that you're struggling with. It's whilst uh, I want to say it's not that deep, but it but I understand that for a lot of us it, it is that deep. Like our houses are our sanctuaries and there are play, you know, for, for a lot of us, if, if our house is in disarray, then that can have a negative effects on our mental health. And then it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle. But what I mean by it's not that deep is you are more important than your house. You are more important than the housework. And you should feel absolutely no guilt or shame for taking some time away from it. Now, obviously, there will come a tipping point where you're like, okay, okay, uh, things are getting out of hand now. I I need to get back into it. I need to get back into the housework. You know, if if I let it get any worse, then we're going to be, you know, we've got a potential problem. We've got to deal with clutter and, you know, we haven't cleaned for a while. We need to do something about it. That's when you sort of like, if you think about, you know, when you're at school, this is how I think, this is how my brain works. And you I like you used to do the skipping. You'd have one person on the end of the skipping rope and another person in, on the other end of the skipping rope. And then you jump in and then you get your rhythm. And like how people would do double ropes, I don't know. I was never co- enough, coordinated enough to do that. And how people would um, have two people skipping at the same time. No, it was just me and two people and a, and a single rope. And that was it, nothing fancy, just basic classic skipping. It's like you're sort of jumping in and trying to get that rhythm. And sometimes the rope might get caught around your ankle. You might have to stop, restart a few times. That's absolutely fine. Just start with the, with the small increments of the most important things. Pick your most important things, break them down into small incremental chunks. And I mean, this is certainly how my brain works. And I know that I am not unique in this. Once my brain starts to see um, progress, it spurs me on and I think, okay, Okay, it's almost like I can feel myself getting stronger, if that makes sense. I can feel myself becoming more powerful, almost like a cartoon character, like um, charging up kind of thing. Positive positive action, positive action, positive action. Um, Again, as I say, everyone, um, everyone's anxiety manifests itself differently. um, And this is just how I personally approach it if I'm going through a, a tricky patch. And if you are going through a rough time at the moment, you know, even if you want to, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, if you search the Organised Bump community over on Facebook, you will find lots of lovely, helpful people over there. There are people that are getting together to be accountability buddies. Um, We are so proud of that group. We monitor it so closely because we know how much housework and the state of your house can be linked to mental health and how the two kind of, interact with each other so sometimes when you share your story or you share a picture and you're like help my my house has sort of gotten the better of me a little bit buzzing my house has got the better of me a little a little bit um where do you think I should start with this room this kind of thing the overwhelming amount of support that the people on in that group give each other is just phenomenal so I just want to let you know that if you do feel overwhelmed if you just like I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like I'm stuck in mud and I can't move. Then there is support over there on that group for you. And obviously this um, YouTube channel, as much as I can possibly make it and keep it a safe space, I hope it gives you some sort of comfort. And I will speak to you all tomorrow.